Hey boys and girls, it's Mr. Whitley, and today's lesson is for, for Monday, April 13th. And for most of you guys, you are working on the last day of the packet today, and the packet is also due. So we're going to have a drop-off and pick-up at Seville. Um, uh, today, if your last name begins with A through L, um, you're going to go drop off this packet at Seville and they'll hand you a new packet, okay? So that is if your last name starts with an A through the letter L and it's between 3 and 6 today. If your last name begins with an M through a Z, you're going to go to Seville tomorrow between 3 and 6. Don't forget to bring your finished packet and you'll get a new one to complete. Now your geodes have four stories. We've used those stories. We know what people are, uh, um, are asking us to do is to take that fourth story and use that fourth story for... Um, the geode writing in the first week this week when you get your new packet, okay? If you have any more questions, have your parents um, give me a Bloom's uh, text, okay? All right, so jumping right into it, something that you and I haven't been able to practice a lot of since we've been separated is trick words. Now we know trick words don't fit our foundation's phonics rules the way that other words do. We can't tap them out completely, which means we just have to know how to spell them. Well, in our class, obviously we have them written up on our trick word wall. You don't have it at home, right? So we're just gonna have to practice them. We're gonna practice um, four that are months and then two that are, are just regular words. Now you notice the four of, um, words that are a month are all capitalized because they're the name of a month, so we need to capitalize those. So you can write these at home, or if you want to do sky writing, you can do that. So for the first word, so J A N U A R Y, we underline it, January. What's my next word? So this always gets me, that R before the U just seems so weird. So F-E-B-R-U-A-R-Y. So we have U-A-R-Y, U-A-R-Y, and both of those, um, both of those months, okay? July is shorter one. J U L Y July December. Oof, glad we're not in December right now. D E C E M B E R and underline it December. Okay? Enough. So E N O U G H. Enough. That U G H is always weird to me. I don't know why. It just seems like a weird way to spell the end of it. And special. S P E C I A L. Special. So th those are our trick words. If you want to pause the video and try that a couple more times, you can skywrite it. You can write it down three times on some paper. It's a great way to practice those trick words. Remember, trick words are words that don't fit all of our phonics rules, and therefore it makes them tricky to spell. Okay? All right. So you and I have been talking about, with math, we've been talking about data. In particular, we've been talking about using graphs to track information. So, one thing that we all can kind of talk about is like pets. Now, maybe we don't all have pets. We don't have pets because Eli's allergic um, to, to cats and dogs, unfortunately. But we love animals, obviously. And you guys probably have a pet at home. Maybe it's a fish, maybe it's a dog, maybe it's a cat. So if you and I were in class, we would be able to do this graph. 
what we would do is we'd keep track of information. We'd probably take votes. So we'd come up with probably the four most common pets, dog, cat, fish, and some people have birds. So those would probably be our most common um, pets that people would have in our, our class. Now if we wanted to ha um, make a graph, in this case we're going to make a bar graph. Remember, bar graph is a little different than a picture graph. A picture graph uses those pictures to represent a vote. In this case, the bar or that section represents how many we're talking about. So if we're voting for this, we would want to first come up with a title and we could say our pets. We always want to have a title because we need our reader to know what information we're giving them. We give them a, a graph. Here's our title at the top. And then we'd mark off the sections for each one. Now we have to figure out, you know, how many votes we have. So let's just say we start with obviously down here is zero. There's no votes. Let's make this our line. Maybe I'll move zero up a little higher. Let's make a zero right there. This first one would be one vote, two, and you're getting the idea. Three and four. Now we need to label each section of our bar graph. So we already have our title, our pets. Down here, simple label for this one would be pets or our pets. All right, well in this case let's just put pets or types of pets. We'll keep it simple. And then over here, if we're talking about our votes, we're going to talk about number of classmates. Let's shorten it. Students. It's kind of tricky to write it on the side like that, isn't it? So over here, these numbers are referring to the number of students who have that sort of animal. Okay, and down here we have the list of the animals that we have. So let's just make up some numbers. You and I aren't together. I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that most um, of our votes would go for dogs. So I'd actually go ahead and fill in all four and say four people have dogs. I would say, let's see, cats are probably pretty popular. So one, two, oh, sorry. I need my five up there. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Didn't label my five. So we'll do one, two, three for cats. Um, I don't know how popular fish are, but they're easy to take care of. So let's give them a two. And for birds, there's only one person I know who has a bird in our class. So we're gonna go for one. Now our bar graph, the biggest thing we are making this bar graph for is to get information. So looking through this, if we wanted to answer some basic questions about it, we would say, all right, which animal is the most popular in our class? Well, obviously it's dogs. So we have five for dogs. Um, which animal is the least popular? Obviously birds, we just have one for birds. Um, if we wanted to find out how many people voted total, that's always important too. So we could say we have five here, we have three there, giving us a total of eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now obviously that's less than what we have in our actual class, but we could say there's a total of eleven people voting. We could say, all right, um, did more people vote for fish and uh, and birds compared to cats. Well, let's see, we have two for fish, one for birds, that gives us a total of three. If we have three for cats, it would make it even. 
So there are different questions that you can ask and answer using the bar graph because it's all about getting information. Now this is a super one, easy one for you to do at home. You can totally come up with your own. If you want to come up with silly animals like dragons and uh, I don't know, um, fire breathing newts and uh, a um, something magical, a unicorn. You can give me a whole list of silly magical animals and you can come up with your own numbers. Just don't forget your title and your labels and your numbers. Make sure you count them up correctly, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about two emotions in just a minute and read a book that's a pretty good one we've read before and it's closer to the beginning of the year. All right, I'll see you in a minute.